Colonel Sean Tindall, Commissioner, Department of Public Safety, and also Colonel Randy Ginn, who is Director of Mississippi Highway Patrol. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. Good morning. Good, Good morning. to see both of you. Geez, are we ready for this one? It looks like the travel is going to be a little bit more than usual. I think people are moving. I was reading that uh, it, it is the busiest travel day um, if, as far as flying in, in, in yep. decades. And, and then people are certainly out on the road and ready to go. Uh, go to the beaches and, and get out for Memorial Weekend. Um, we, yeah, we just had the story, Colonel, of 50,000 people are, are expected at the airport in Memphis. Wow. <laughs> uh, They're packing uh, them in. Uh, that they are. Uh, number one task here is to give us an update uh, on the new class, because I do believe we have a new class that's going to be graduated as far as our patrolmen. That's right. Uh, we've got Class 67 graduating today. We'll have 48 new uh, Mississippi State troopers out uh, working the roads to to try to make Mississippi safer. And, and what good time and with the with the heavy travel weekend coming up. Give me a little bit of this, by the numbers, how many people and how many is going to graduate possibly and how many more do we need? Well, we, we definitely have 48 graduating. Uh, it started off with a class of about 75. We had right around 500 applicants. Um, so, you know, this is narrowing it down to the, the 10 percent. Uh, mm-hmm. the best that, that we could find. And so they go through a pretty extensive training program. Um, what, Colonel, 17 weeks? Yes, sir. 17 weeks. And, um, you know, they, they'll do another part of their training will be their FTO program. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it, it's adding to the ranks. We should put us around 500 or so state troopers. Uh, we need to be closer to 600 or 650. But uh, we're we're certainly working towards that. This will be the first time since the 90s that we've had um i think six consecutive years that we've had a patrol school and, yeah. and governor yeah. reeves has been very committed to making sure we continue that trend just wondering i, I don't want to get too personal but colonel uh, how long have you been in law enforcement 35 years paul 35 years yes sir <laughs> well you, you and i both know back in the early days we didn't have something called uh social media but that has had an influence on law enforcement, and, and, and I'm, I'm afraid, to be honest with you, we haven't seen the beginning of the end of this as far as what that impact is going to be, not only on the way that the general public is interacting with the police officer, with the sheriffs, with the highway patrolmen, regardless of what state it's in, but also on the recruiting. Can, can, can you speak to that? Because I think it's a, it's a major impact here and going forward. Well, it is, Paul, and it makes uh, the recruiting a little more difficult and a little more mm-hmm. challenging, and, and we have to be uh, mindful of that every day uh, on the job and on the road. And, and look, if we're doing it right, uh, everything's good. It's uh, when we stuff our toe, mm-hmm. you know, that gets highlighted and, and goes out there and paints that negative picture that we've got to overcome. So we uh, we do have to be uh, more creative and look at different ways to recruit different places to recruit and uh, we have to be more proactive with our our current staff to make sure that we're training and keeping up to date on everything to do it the right way every time that uh, keeps us from having those negative uh, outcomes on social media yeah because sooner or later one of them is going to turn into calling the lawyer somewhere and and uh, I'm, I'm that's certainly something that uh, is not needed the when you start looking at that, and Sean, are you okay over there? You no ears? It's not working. It may be. It may be the the. Um, it may. Can you you want to give us a voice test there or something? Sean, he, he can't. He can't hear us. That's okay. We'll uh, we'll get you a new set of earphones over there, Colonel. Let me ask you this: uh, When do you think that they'll hit the road as far as uh, and they get there? What they get? A, they get the car and all of the stuff that goes with that. You know, they, yes, they, sir. But folks, we're doing we're doing some repair work here. How about now? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Jeez, it's been a it's been a typical Friday for some reason. I don't know. We should serve alcohol on days like this, but no driving. <laughs> no so, driving. Absolutely yeah, no absolutely. driving. All right. Let me let me let me reboot here. One of the things that we were talking about is seat belts. There's going to be a big uh, seat belt uh, initiative that goes on. Uh, would you gentlemen speak to that? Yeah, click it or ticket that campaign yes. has uh, started, and mm. it's a two-week uh, campaign that uh, uh, goes out and uh, does uh, uh, an awareness campaign through media, and and we also have uh, extra uh, troopers. There's also sheriff's deputies and police officers that participate in the program out 
uh, looking for uh, violations for a seat belt and uh, trying to uh, uh, be proactive. And if we know seat belts save lives, we know that it keeps uh, you in the car. Uh, if you have a rollover accident, which is the most dangerous type of accident you can have uh, if you're not wearing a seat belt. So it's just to uh, increase that public awareness and hopefully get people to uh, wearing those seat belts. Because yeah, when we wear seat belts, we see our fatality rates go down. Is uh, Shaw the fine is twenty five dollars? Is it is that what it still is in our state? It, it, it's a it's a pretty low fine, but still, um, you know, once you add court fees and things like that, and in the time it takes uh, to show up in that, court, yeah. you're better off putting your seatbelt on. And I think the reality is. Unfortunately, Mississippi ranks very high in our fatality rates, um, yeah. usually number one or number two in the nation. And, and I understand folks don't want to put their seatbelt on, but, but the reality is it saves lives. And, and, you know, if we can, a $25 ticket is worth getting that point across to save the life of, of an individual or a family. The um, the rules and regulations were changed in the state of Mississippi. It hasn't been that long ago where if you're in the back seat, you didn't have to wear a seatbelt, but that's not the case anymore. Yeah, that's right. The occupants, uh, everybody needs to, to have their seatbelt on. And, um, and, and particularly, you know, when you think about your minors, I've got small kids. I get mm-hmm. it. They start wanting to move around in the back. But, you know, we we start our yelling and pull over and tell, tell them to put the seatbelts on. So it, it's... Uh, it's just that important that that the occupants of the car wear the seatbelt, and, yeah. and it doesn't. You don't have to be moving really fast for it to cause a fatality. And here's some of the problems we talk about: social media, Colonel. The problem is when people don't know the law. It's not your fault; it's their fault. All of a sudden, you stop somebody; they've got their seatbelt on, and you give them a ticket for three people because it's three kids in the back that are not seat that don't have seatbelts on. Then they got a seventy-five dollar minimum there. I guess it's twenty-five dollars a piece. And then all of a sudden, they, a, a brouhaha uh, breaks out, and, and, and they're trying to argue with you. Yes, sir. And, and you know, that's where that campaign to uh, educate and to mm-hmm. uh, push that uh, information out in media outlets is, is important because everybody doesn't understand that law and the changes, and, and those laws change from year to year. So the, uh, the awareness campaign has uh, the media uh, component that is very important. To helping us get that word out and, and you know you talk about social media and, and so many of these folks get you know they go and they watch social media and they get their law degree on facebook and, and the yes. reality is yes. if you get pulled over uh, for a seatbelt violation or any other violation the officer in mississippi doesn't have to tell you why he pulled you over uh right off the bat if he asks you for your driver's license which we're going to do in mississippi you have to produce that driver's license if you don't you could be arrested um, and, and your car impounded. and, and Do you have to, to tell them why you have pulled them over? Ultimately, you're going to have to tell them because you're going to write them a ticket. And I, don't, so, I, don't, I don't understand this, though. Why, why not when you stop immediately identify who you are, what, what division you're with, you know, local, municipality, whatever it happens to be, and here's the reason I pulled you over. Well, part what, of that, what's the reason for that? Part of that is you want to make sure that you can identify the occupants of the car first in case mm-hmm. they leave. And so, you know, that's why that was put into law the way it is, is so for officer safety and also to know the identity of who you're dealing with right off the bat. It could be that it's a wanted criminal. Um, and, and so getting that license and making sure we know who we're dealing with is, is very important. Well, why couldn't you say you're being temporarily detained, and here's the reason I'm pulling you over, and then go from there? Because if they take off, <laughs> then there's going to be a pursuit. Well, then once you detain somebody, then yeah. at that point you kick in a whole litany of constitutional rights that have to uh-huh. be uh, acknowledged and, and, and you know handled appropriately. So, you know, I think, you know, there's all those considerations. Again, it's just state law. you got to produce yep. the ID. And, that's, and that and that is state law in the state of Mississippi because you are driving that vehicle. You are required um, to present not only that but the insurance. That's right, and and, you, and and it's exactly why we have DUI laws too. I mean, yeah. it's a privilege to operate a vehicle on the roads of the state of Mississippi. That's not a constitutional right, and so there are certain regulations and requirements that go along with that. Yeah, while you're traveling, just have those things ready first, folks, and and you, you know don't. If you can have them on the visor, that's good, or somewhere handy so you don't have to get into the glove compartment box. But I want to ask Colonel again when we come back here a couple of things as far as the insurance is concerned. And uh, it's if you're driving, you have to have insurance, so have your insurance card. But that and also tinted windows. And what's the procedure when there is a shooting? 
What do you guys go through to make sure the public knows exactly what's going on? All those and more when we return in just a moment. Let me get back with our visit with uh, Commissioner of the Department of Public Safety and also Sean Tendall, also Colonel uh, Randy Ginn. We were talking about insurance on the insurance card. Real simple to do. Well, just make sure you have your card and your, your uh, driver's license together, and that's one of the requirements that they have to provide insurance. If they do not, what happens? Either one of you guys. If they're unable to produce a proof of insurance, then a, a citation is issued, and they will be, if they have insurance, they can go to court and show that they have insurance, and, and it'll be dealt with, or they'll have to pay a fine uh, for not having insurance. So, but if they do have insurance, it'll be dismissed? It is, yes, sir. The law provides for that. And do you, do you find a lot of people who just don't have their driver's license with them? And I've never understood that. I think that's, you know, a regular yeah. occurrence. But I, I will say that, you know, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, we started the Mississippi Mobile ID. And so mm -hmm. it, for most people, they might leave their driver's license, but they can they usually have their phones that's with true. them. And yeah. so if you download that, at least you'll have that form of identification with you. Uh, we tell everybody it is much better to keep your physical ID with you. But but folks leave it. And, and that's happened. I mean, I, I'll be the first to admit I've gotten in the car and realized I left my wallet. And, you know, mm -hmm. th those things happen. But th that's a good backup to have at the Mississippi. Mississippi mobile ID. We um, is, has life changed since we don't have the inspection stickers anymore. It, it has. I mean, the colonel and I have talked about that in a variety of aspects, but particularly yeah. with the tent law, um, and and you know, there's no inspection on the tents at this point. Um, so really, folks, they'll they'll get a tent put on, or they'll buy a car, and it's in, in and it's too dark, uh, and, and that's a violation, and and they didn't have any idea uh, because they haven't done that annual inspection, yeah. and so. You know, I, there are, there probably ought to be some sort of inspection. I just don't know that it ought to be annually, and, and we need to probably reconsider some of yeah. those decisions that were made. I, I never understood this. Again, trying to bring common sense in here every once in a while, and you have to go to the vault and pick it up and, and open it up and, and, and examine common sense today. But if in, – intended windows are a wonderful thing. It's, it, most people understand this, and well, some of the reasons they get them, certainly in the state of Mississippi where it's so hot – but if we had a law that just says if you're ever stopped by any law enforcement officers, then you have to roll your window down immediately, would seem to be uh, front and back, any window that's tinted. Uh, it would seem to be one of the things that uh, could take care of that situation. I'm calling Chairman Wiggins and Chairman Bain, and we're, we yeah. might name that bill after you. Uh, I, I don't care what you name it. I just think it's a good idea. I think it's just, a great just, idea. Yeah, I do, you, too. Uh, here's the law. You rolled your window down. If not, you're going to be fined for the uh, for the tenant windows because we can't see. And I can understand that. Uh, you, you want to see who you're dealing with one way or the other. Sure, it's a safety issue. Absolutely. When we get inf information, there's an uh, officer shooting, and we've had uh, a lot of those lately. Um, what's the procedure you guys go by? Well, generally, we'll get a call um, from the local law enforcement agencies that, that one has occurred, and um, MBI uh, will respond with agents mm -hmm. to that scene. Um, if, if our crime scene unit uh, is, is close and available, that they'll also respond to, to do the crime scene. It's in some areas of the state, there's local crime scene units that, that are used, um, and then the process begins. And, and so uh, th there's a... You know, a detailed investigation. MBI has made it a, a real focus uh, on on their mission to to do those jobs, and of course, state law mandated that they be the primary agency investigating officer-involved mm -hmm. shootings across the state. And, and a lot of that is one uh, to remove any you know, appearances of conflicts of interest, but then two, uh, so that they could really focus their efforts and do it in a uniform manner across the entire state. So most of the time, that officer, I would imagine, one hundred percent of the time, the officer is put on. Immediate suspension with pay? It depends on e each jurisdiction has the ability to handle mm -hmm. those matters as they deem appropriate. But in general, yes, uh, the officers uh, will have a period of time that they're on, on administrative leave uh, mm -hmm. with pay. And, and even if it's uh, the shoot appears to be appropriate, uh, there, there's still mental health aspects and, and yes. other things that need yeah. to be addressed. So that officer needs some time, um, even in the situations where everything's done right. Uh, internally, each department will have an opportunity to have their IA look at the uh, the shooting and then make mm -hmm. a decision as to whether or not uh, that the person should remain on administrative leave with pay, without pay, or or to terminate. 
Colonel, again, I was just wondering, where are some of your recruits coming from? Are most of them in-state, or do we have a lot coming from out-of-state now, as far as recruits to the to the next class of the Highway Patrol? Yeah, Paul, they're, they're all from in-state. We uh, we had a good group, and uh, our recruiters mm-hmm. did a good job in-state. We From uh, from other police officers, uh, organizations of things? We or? do have uh, 19 uh, of these cadets that uh, will be troopers sworn in today, uh, our sworn officers from other agencies that had two years experience prior to there's a couple that had less than two years uh, I don't have those exact numbers but uh, uh, about 40 uh, percent of the class uh, have uh, mm-hmm. experience uh, military uh, I think we have eight in the class that have military uh, some some form of experience in one branch or the other we getting some uh, uh, representation from the from uh, ladies out there we have one female in this class. We yeah. uh, we we didn't have the the, the turnout of the females, uh, ladies, for this class like we've had in uh, some of our previous classes. But uh, that's uh, uh, <laughs> the one that we do have. Uh, she's a uh, s- uh, sister of a uh, trooper already, so we have another family mm-hmm. member in the family, and uh, we'll be looking about for uh, uh, men and women in the next class coming up, and hopefully we'll have a. a Good turnout for that from the ladies. That's right. I read a story, Sean. It was a couple of weeks ago about the possibility of Dodge Chargers changing over some things. Are are we are we about to see the the old Ford go away and now the Charger go away? Or where have you read anything about that? Uh, we've talked about that, and, and finding cars and vehicles is more and more difficult for us. Mm-hmm. But but the Charger is eliminating the. Uh, uh, the the pursuit package uh, detail that they have for the charger, so Jeez. Um, that that's not going to be available in a law enforcement package, and and so we're we're looking uh, at other directions. But I mean, that's a specific thing. It, nobody builds a specific police vehicle. It would just seem to me that with uh, national. By the time you put this nationally, there would be a market for that. Well, you have the Ford Explorers uh, that have those packages, and the Durangos, um, I believe, have those packages yeah, as yeah. well. Some of the trucks and the Tahoes, but but the cars are going away from that. And, and to be to be quite honest, the cars have gotten so small um, that it is kind of difficult, particularly if you make an arrest, to have somebody in the back yes, seat of these yeah. smaller vehicles. Well, and then another reason for the things like the Explorer. That's right. That's right. And, you know, and, and for these officers now, the, the car is, is, is a mobile office. They have computers. They have equipment. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they really need more space. It's not like the good old days with the Crown Vic that was a floating boat um, that wouldn't turn over. And you could, you could put, you know, put yeah. five people in the back and still have a computer in the front. Well, it's a woke world, Colonel. Before you know it, uh, they're going to be offering, you know, the only thing you have is a minivan. <laughs> it, that could be... Reality, Paul. I hate to say that out loud. That's not gonna. That's not gonna help recruits at all. Yeah, yeah no. they, <laughs> troopers everywhere are losing their mind when you said that. Uh, uh, and, and, and probably be pink or something like that, but I'm not sure. It's, it's just crazy out there, one way or the other. Gentlemen, as always, I know it's going to be busy. You, you, they're working tw- uh, extra shifts out there. Yes, sir. They are. Paul, we start our uh, uh, holiday campaign this weekend for Memorial Day and start it today. So they'll be working. Uh, uh, extra troopers will be out all weekend trying to uh, keep uh, everybody safe and uh, help them get to where they're going. And this trooper class graduates at 10 o'clock today. So they'll, oh, they'll, is that right? They're, they're coming out, um, you know, like I said, Memorial Weekend, ready to roll. And, and we're already planning next year's class. One of the things wait, that wait a minute, they're graduating today and they'll be on the road tomorrow? That's right. Uh, they'll be on the 1st. Okay. So on the 1st. Oh, that's right. This starts the 1st of the yes, month. They well, do. So. They got lucky. Um, they didn't have to work the Memorial Weekend today. <laughs> Hey, Sean, let me ask you, where where are we standing as far as the uh, new facilities are concerned? Uh, building a new headquarters should be in next year, um, and excited about that. We've got a new troop station going up in Starkville. Yep. Uh, and, and one of our big pushes coming up in the future is to rebuild Melota. You talked about these officer-involved shootings. You yes. talk, we've talked about these yes. issues with uh, you know social media and Facebook and cameras in your face. Training is so important, not just for Highway Patrol, but across the state. And, and we've got to make a concerted effort to improve law enforcement training uh, because of the world that these, these officers are involved in. And I'll also make this plug. We talked about the female uh, cadets only having one this year. Uh, one of the things that I'm most proud of under this administration, Governor Reeves and Colonel Ginn and myself, we, we have had patrol schools every year, and we're going to keep doing that. Uh, the next patrol school will start in January 2024. Uh, we've already started the recruiting process. So if you're interested in becoming a state trooper, please come to the DPS website, and, and we'll have uh, applications up soon. 
Gentlemen, thank you for coming in. To all the Highway Patrol men and women, please be safe with us and, and, and everybody else and, and understand they're out there to, to keep you safe. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it very much.